This is an Innovato Quadra with a ham clock bundle installed on it. This was sent in by a viewer. Let's take a look this time on Ham Radio Tube. So this is what we're looking at, this Innovato ham clock bundle that can be found on innovato.com slash products slash ham clock bundle. I'll leave a link in the description below. Looks like it comes with, he just kind of sent this. I don't know if it comes in a box or anything, um, but this is the stuff you get. And uh, it's only $49, nine, $49 for this thing. So uh, pretty awesome. So I thought I'd uh, show you guys around and take a look at this thing. I just got it. I played around with it a little bit to familiarize myself with it, but $49. This also has some other ham radio software on it, I believe. So here is a look at the Innovato Quattro. I think I'm saying that right. I think this is like a Raspberry Pi competitor. I'm not really familiar with this much at all, but it's just a little tiny computer. Uh, it's appears to be like linux based and you've got uh, your common ports so you got your power usb there's usb here and there's a usb on the side as well as a little looks like there's a, a micro sd card slot there and then you've got your uh, ethernet hdmi and uh your uh eighth inch jack for audio and that's pretty much it that's that's the thing came with a little power cord here so uh let's get this plugged in and i will show you this awesome ham clock thing it's pretty neat all right and once the computer boots this is what you're going to be presented to at startup now a couple things you want to do first or really just one uh, make sure you click up here it'll be like an up and down arrow and go ahead and connect it to your wi-fi that's kind of important once that's done then you can click on this this is basically saying do you want to start this computer as a ham clock every time you turn it on so in my case let's just hit yes and then it's going to say, would you like to resize the screen to match the ham clock? Sure. After you click done, ham clock is going to run and automatically on boot. When it runs for the first time, we're going to go through uh, some setups here and I'll show you. And you can t uh, to exit full screen mode, you can hit alt and F11 and get out of it. So here we want to click anywhere to enter setup. Then we're going to be presented with this screen. Let me get rid of myself and there's all kinds of things in here, but right here is where you'd type in your call sign. So I'm KMRD. So we'll put that in there. Uh, you can enter your latitude and longitude if you just know your grid square. So for example, let's just put nothing there. I'm an EM 20 FR. That's my lat long. You can also use uh, whatever GPSD is or IP geolocate. Wi-Fi, uh, I haven't found I've needed to turn on here because I have it on on the computer itself, but, uh, and you can dive in there. There's really good instructions for this. And then we can go to the next page. Here is where you can enter in a DX cluster. Uh, if you know the, uh, like the host thing and the port number, all that stuff, you can do that. I'm not a hundred percent on what this is, but you've like, it's got rig control and rotator control. You can use FL rig. There's a bunch of ham radio software outside of uh, just ham clock that's installed on this already when you buy this version. So that's kind of cool. Uh, NTP eight, if I'm not sure what those are for, but that has that too. Map center. Um, so like I'm kind of 95 West uh, longitudinally. So uh, put this in where you want the map to be centered, you know, if you're in Europe or something, obviously you're not going to be in 95 West. That's where you do that. Here you have uh, just how kind of some, you know, date, where in your week starts, if you want to be Imperial or metric and you just click on these. And if you want the spot labels as the full call or just uh, a dot or prefix, whatever, all kinds of things on here. So there's a lot of things you can do on here. I'm not going to go through everything because this video would be like four hours long. But uh, that's all the stuff you can do in here. Log usage. I'm not sure what that is, but there's all kinds of things. So bearings, true north or magnetic north, um, spot paths, all that stuff. And then the next screen here is going to be where you would customize. So, for example, here we can highlight this short path. And do we want the line to be a solid line? It can be a dotted line. Uh, I believe you can change the color. I'm not 100%, probably over here with these sliders. I'm going to leave everything as kind of the default because uh, I don't want to mess anything up. But you can change the colors of the different bands and everything that will show up on the on the spotting thing. So uh, this is where you do all that, and then we're back to the main screen. Now we can hit Done. 
and it's going to run through uh, just some stuff here. I'm not sure what it's doing, honestly. It's probably just syncing things. You can skip it, but it only takes a few seconds, so I just let it run. And now here we are. Now, for some reason, it always changes my UTC to minus six. I'm actually minus five right now. We can actually just click right here on UTC, and I'm just going to change that really quick. And this is actually quite interactive. It's, it's really cool. So starting at the top, just on my call sign, if I click over the K, you can see that changes the letter or the color of the letters of my call sign. If I click over here on the D, that'll change the background there. So you can kind of customize that however you want. There's a lock right here, which I'm not 100% sure what does, but it does that. And like every single one of these little windows has different uh, settings. So I just clicked on the time and it can either go forward or backward. Maybe we can go back in time. Um, and maybe, maybe that's just how to set it. Um, so now we're off on UTC, so something happened. Oh, there we are. Okay. I just had to click this and turn it back to UTC, so don't do that. <laughs> so now coming down here to, uh, the again, each one of these windows kind of does things. So I can click on DE, and here I can change like how this layout looks. So maybe I want it on calendar. We can click that. You can see that changed. Uh, I kind of like the uh, all info thing, but um, here's a simple analog. You know, you can you can kind of make it look however you want. I prefer this one. This window down here is like the DX. So, for example, if I click over here, it's going to show like the time zone there, the time, the temperature, all kinds of stuff. Uh, well, it should say the temperature. It did earlier. Um, maybe that's another window. But it gives you all the info of where they're at. And just clicking on the window here, you can see... Oh, here's the temperature up here of, like, where it is over there. Here's so, like, down here in South America, apparently it's 54 degrees. I'm not sure I believe that, but there it is, 90 degrees. That's probably closer to it. So all kinds of stuff you can do with that. You can also click on this DX, and you can select uh, satellites that might be coming overhead. So let's just pick, I, I don't know, uh, LO74, LO19, sure, why not? I have no idea. And that'll show like where the pass is in relation to my grid square. So that's pretty sweet. And then there is the actual satellite right there where, where the pass will be. So that's pretty cool for all you satellite guys. And then you can click in the center there and you can change this back to... Uh, show DX info contact. So that, I thought that was pretty neat. And we can uncheck this. And there's just, there's so many settings you can do here. And then these windows up here, so the, you've got multi-functions and it that really would be a good idea to familiar, your, familiarize yourself with the manual. But you can just kinda, I'm just clicking at the top here and it brings up this window. So right now I only have live spots selected. You can select multiple different things, whichever your heart desires, and it'll cycle through, or you can just select one. So let, for example, let's just select moon. Well, there's the moon right now, okay? And you can actually click in the center, and this will show moon data. Go ahead and hit resume, and that will bring back our uh, map there. Uh, but let's say maybe we want solar wind. We can take a look at that. There's our solar wind. Maybe you want to look at POTUS spots. We can click that, hit OK. Now we're looking at POTUS spots. Or if you want to look at a bunch of things, maybe we'll hit the moon, maybe we'll hit the space weather, uh, solar wind, VOA cap, whatever, and it will cycle through because I have all those selected it'll just cycle through all of those and you can do the same thing with each one of these different windows here so uh, for example we've got solar flux on here right now maybe let's look at uh, the x-rays there we have our x-rays but again if we wanted more on here again we can just maybe I want this just to be like solar weather stuff so we can hit OK there I think I have to uncheck them from here Let's get rid of solar wind. 
yeah so now they're back up here so solar wind space weather sunspot number all that stuff that'll all cycle through on here looking at this sun this is really cool so if we click up here again we've got the same uh information but uh the the list lessons because we're using them over here and they just they, they cycle through uh periodically so i've got this on sdo we'll just mean that we'll just say that means sun and if we click on the center of it maybe it needs to build here there we are we get these different images okay so depending on how we want to look at the sun here's a composite image of the sun isn't that cool? We can click on it again. Here's another one. It's usually not this slow. I don't know why it's taking so long to build, but how cool is that? So you can look at different uh, different projections of the sun. If you hit this rotate, that'll just rotate between all the different options that we had there. So that's pretty neat. And then over here, uh, these are the beacons that, that, that comes on default but I kind of like to keep it on this space weather here and that kind of shows you uh, all of this information here. And now you can see this changed here to vocap. So like stuff is happening, it's interactive, it's really cool. And then notice here, this terrain thing, wherever I, wherever my mouse is hovering, like it's, it's showing what's going on right there. So we can see, let's, let's check in on uh, Hayden. He's down here in Tasmania. Uh, it's, where is he in VK land? It's like 62 degrees there. So that's pretty cool. Another thing we can click on this terrain and this brings up a whole list of options for the actual map. So for example, uh, we can change, maybe we want to look at this by countries and then we can hit okay, let it refresh. And now we have a different view of that. I personally prefer the terrain, but uh, you've got all kinds of different options here. Let's see what drap is. I think this is just like more of a basic map. Yeah, so here's the drap. Looks kind of drabby to me. So I like to keep it on terrain, but we can also change like how the map projection is. So let's put this on this, whatever the heck it was, and we'll get more of like this oval kind of view of the earth. So that's kind of neat. And you can also do uh, as a muthal, and then you get like both uh, both sides of the moon there. And then azimuthal one is another one. So there you are. So it just keeps it kind of centered where we set my location earlier. And there's where the sun is shining. So that is pretty darn neat. But I like it on Mercator projection. I think that's the best looking one there. So there we have it, just a brief overview of this very inexpensive ham clock, $49. Looks like they're back ordered until uh, probably uh, December 11th, the website said. But uh, 49 bucks, you could probably get one on order, maybe have it for Christmas time. But I just wanted to show this to you because I just started playing with it and I thought it was really cool. And thank you who sent this out to me. You know who you are. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube 73.